Hey guys, this is Nefarious Intent back for part three of the Minecraft 1.8 hacked client coding tutorial. The truth. In this video, we will be coding the client watermark and the array list. This video series is brought to you by Intent, the leading marketplace for premium Minecraft cheats with affordable prices. Check them out at intent.store. Once you have Eclipse open, we can continue where we left off by opening the client folder and the source folder. We will start by creating a sub package under the intent package called UI. Then we'll create a new class in that called HUD or heads up display. We will then go into the client class and make a new instance of the HUD object. So public static HUD HUD equals new HUD and then import HUD. Then we're going to go back to HUD and create a new method called draw. So public void draw, like so. Then we're going to go to GUI in game and scroll to about line 349 until you get right before this method. And we're going to type client HUD and we got to import client. Sometimes it'll do it automatically, sometimes it won't. You just have to bear with it. And then draw. And now the HUD will be drawn if there's anything in here. Before we launch Minecraft, we're going to create a new object called Scaled Resolution, and then we're going to call its local name SR, and then set it equal to a new Scaled Resolution, and then give Minecraft, which we need an instance of, so I'm going to create it right now, public Minecraft NC equals Minecraft Minecraft, and then after mc, we're going to say mc.displayWidth and mc.displayHeight. And then we're going to import scaled resolution and add a semicolon right there. Now we can start up Minecraft and we can start editing the UI. Once Minecraft is open, you can see nothing is currently being drawn on the screen. But if I say something like mc.fontRenderObject draw string and I say hello and use the coordinates 0, 0 on the screen and the color negative 1. And I save it, it'll say hello in the top left of the screen. So now we have control of the user interface. The next step for us is to get rid of this and replace it with something relevant, like the client name. So I'm going to call client name, and now it'll draw the client name, being tutorial. And I can add a space, and I can add the client version, and it'll say tutorial 1, and I can add a V there, and it'll say tutorial V1. Now, if you want to offset that from the corners of the screen, you can just type in a coordinate, and then as you can see, now it's offset by 4 on both axes. That actually looks pretty good, so I'm going to go on to the array list. To draw the array list, we have to enumerate all the modules in the client that are toggled. So we're going to type 4 module m out of client.modules and then inside that we're going to import module then we're going to copy this font rendering string right here we're going to paste it there and then we're going to change the value of the string it draws to be the name of the module like so module dot name and as you can see it's still overlapping the tutorial so what we're going to do is we're going to use this scaled resolution variable we created earlier and we're going to get the distance to the far right of the screen and then we're going to subtract it by four that won't solve our problem, but as you can see, it's on the right of the screen. And no matter how much I expand or contract the screen, it maintains that position. So now instead of using four, we're going to subtract it by the width of the string. So we're going to call the font renderer object variable, and then we're going to subtract it by the width of the module name. So plug that right in here. And now it'll be in the screen. Now that still doesn't look good, so we'll probably subtract it by four, just like we offset the logo over here. So now you can see tutorial 1 on the left side and fly on the right side. Now I'm going to make it so that it only draws the string of the module if that module is enabled. So we're going to say if module is not toggled then continue which basically skips the current module. And as you can see now nothing's rendered there. But if I toggle fly using the keybind I created earlier it shows up and I can fly except I'm in creative mode so that probably disrupts it. I can fly and then I turn it off and it turns off again. Next, I'm gonna use a Minecraft utility called GL State Manager to scale the logo. So 
I'm going to type scale, and then I'm going to type 2 for the x-axis, 2 for the y-axis, and 1 for the z-axis, because I don't want to affect the z-axis. And then, after it, I'm going to type 1 half, so 0.5, and 0.5. And that'll mean everything rendered after that will still be rendered at the default scale. So when I save it, you can see that now the logo is double the size of the word fly over here. So it's working. Now you have to keep in mind that the scale by default anchors on the zero, zero position. So this logo would continue to scale this direction unless I change something about it. So what I'm gonna do is actually tell the GL state manager where to anchor from and that way it can grow from there. So I'm gonna say GL state manager translate and that basically tells it to move on the axes. I'm gonna say move to four, four and zero. So I'm offsetting it by four on both axes. And then I'm subtracting the four and four after I draw the scale. And then I'm doing the same thing at the second scale. So now when I open up Minecraft after saving it, it translates back a little bit. Next, I'm gonna draw a background behind the module name. So I'm gonna type GUI, which is the Minecraft GUI utility. And I'm gonna type draw rect, so draw rectangle. And then it's got four points. These are the two corners, the left top and the right bottom. So for the left top, I'm gonna to choose the position of the font where it starts, like so. And then for the right, I'm gonna choose width, which is the absolute end of the right of the screen. And then for the bottom, I'm gonna choose the Y position of the font, which is four, and then I'm gonna add the font height. So mc.fontrenderer obj font height, right there. And then for the color, I'm gonna choose 0x, FF or 0x90 0000000. 000 000. So this is a hex color and 90 means it's around 60% opacity. 00 means it's no red, no green, and no blue. FF is the maximum and 00 is the minimum for each color channel. So now when I save it and draw it, it'll look something like this. Now that doesn't look so good, but it is a background and we'll build on that. I'm now gonna create a copy of the font renderer at the beginning of the draw method that makes calling it a lot simpler. So font renderer fr equals mc dot font renderer object. And then I'm gonna import the font renderer. And now instead of saying this whole thing, I can actually control F and replace it with fr and replace all. And now my code just got a lot smaller. The only issue is that it replaced the instance of the original, which is the font render object. So you've got to make sure to avoid that or just to replace it after that happens. And then I can save and resume the program. Now I'm going to change the shape of the background. So as you can see, when I enable it, it probably should be longer in this direction and it should also be flush with the top of the window. So I'm going to reduce the offset from the top and now it's touching the top. And I'm also gonna subtract the same amount I subtracted from the right of the screen to the left. So now it's like that. Now there's still some missing space on the bottom, so I'll fill that in by adding a little bit more. So probably two more pixels, which convert to four real pixels. Okay, so as you can see, it looks pretty centered now. That Now I'm gonna create another module called Sprint. I'll do this by right-clicking on Fly, clicking Copy, and then clicking Paste into the same package. Then I'll choose Sprint as the new name and I'll open it. Then I'll use the class name as the constructor name and I'll change the keybind key to in. Then I'll get rid of the flying code and I'll add in a method right here called mc.theplayer.setSprinting and I'll set it to true. So whenever the module is on, it'll set the player sprinting to true. And then I'll also say on disabled set the player sprinting to false. Now I have to register it. I'll go to the client class and I'll go down to where fly is registered and I'll copy that line and replace it with sprint and then I'll import it. Then I'll launch the client. Once Minecraft is open, I can press in and you see I'm sprinting now constantly. No matter what direction I go, I'm sprinting. And when I turn it off, I stop sprinting. So what happens if I enable fly and sprint at the same time? what looks like they overlap. So here's how we're gonna fix the problem. We're gonna to go to the heads up display class and then we're gonna add a new variable on top of the for loop called count. So integer count equals zero. That means currently no modules have been drawn. But then 
after the front renderer being drawn we're going to add a plus plus and this will cause it to go up one so count will increase by one integer every time a module is drawn and then we're going to use that to multiply by the offset from the top for each module so we'll take count and we'll add it to the height of the font that's offset and then we'll multiply it by the font height now what should happen is sprint will get offset and as you can see sprint is offset if I disable fly sprint becomes the main attraction and if I re-enable fly it's lowered again now that's not quite enough for our liking so I'm going to say the font height in parentheses plus four and now sprint is quite a bit lower and then I'm also going to apply this offset to drawing the rectangle so this last argument or parameter is the bottom of the y-axis so when I do this it'll lower the rectangle but the top is still at the top so we're gonna find this zero and that's the top y-axis so then I'm gonna save that and as you can see the rectangle has now been lowered that's still not quite enough so on each instance of this I'm gonna change that four to a six and then when I save it as you can see they're flush next we're gonna take this variable that we've used three times and we're gonna make an instance of it that has a smaller name so we're gonna call this offset and we're gonna set it equal to that repeat variable and then all the places where it's used we can just replace with the word offset now that causes a few problems part of it is because the GUI isn't ready to handle numbers with decimal points it's only integers so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that method to accept doubles and then we're gonna find a couple places where it needs to be changed from integer to double this is one of them and then also this is one of them we need to change all the parameters to double and now you can see there's no errors that doesn't solve all our problems so we're gonna have to terminate the application and then we're also gonna have to allow the string to render with a double parameter as well which will actually be cast to a float later but that's beyond our expertise in the video currently now we're gonna to want to order the modules being rendered by the length of their strings so we're gonna create a comparator which is a tool that can be used to compare the different lengths and order them by that so we're gonna say public static class module comparator and it implements the actual prototype comparator class with the type module being what's going to be compared I can then import comparator and add some unimplemented methods which is the compare method so now we're going to actually put in the statement that tells it what to compare them by we're going to take the first module compares and we're going to say minecraft get minecraft because we can't access the variable right here so we're going to have to use the long version we're going to say get the font renderer object get the string width of the name of the first module so that whole piece of junk and if it's greater than the second width which is arg1 then we're going to return one and if it's the other way around where it's less than then we're going to return negative one whoops I accidentally flipped that there we go now that's negative one okay so then next we're going to go to the draw method right about here and we're gonna say collections sort and then the comparator is gonna be module comparator and the order we're gonna be comparing is client dot modules and let me make sure I got that right we might need to say new instance of okay okay it's the other way around let me put this over here and that works okay so now if we start up the client it should order them by the length starting from greatest to least so when we turn on both modules yes they're ordered by greatest to least length if you're interested in drawing drop shadow with the text you want to go to font render and then we're going to find a function called this and we're going to actually rename this so refactor rename we're going to call it draw string with shadow and then after it's done renaming we can go back to the hud and change this and this to draw string with shadow we also need to allow it to use doubles instead of just floats like so and then we'll cast 
these as floats right here by doing this little parenthesis trick. Now you can see the drop shadow has taken effect as well as in the array list, although more subtle. If you want to add a little flair to the client, you could also draw little mini boxes beside the big boxes that outline the module name. We can actually subtract 10 instead of 8 to the left, and then we can copy the X and then replace it over here and then start with 8. And now what you'll see is it's a little bit longer on this left side, and we can change the color to something else like white, which actually there's a shorthand negative 1. And now you can see there's these boxes on the left, and you can actually change that to whatever color you want. There are websites to help you pick hex colors if you're in need to. But for me, I'm going to try um, 00 for no red, and then 90 for some green, and FF for a lot of blue. And what I should get is a sort of aqua or light blue color. This concludes part 3 of the Minecraft 1.8 hacked client coding tutorial. See you in the next video.